I'm Alison Gofton, who has gone from cooking food in a minute to food in about five hours. Alison Gofton, welcome to Good Living. How Thanks, are you? Megan. Really well, thank you. We're so thrilled to have you back in Christchurch. Oh, it's lovely you? down here. Yeah, isn't it just? Of course, with the launch of your new book called Slow, how's it going? It's doing very well. We're very pleased with it. It's only been out a week and it's, um, it's kind of rocketing out the door. So delighted after a whole year's worth of work on it. Mm. So have you always been a fan of the slow cooker? Yes, we have. You know, we tried to get them to do slow cookers on food in a minute, but it was a bit kind of low. I'm not too sure about that. Not too sure how many people have them. But in this time of recession that we've had, people are looking backwards into some of the things that are homely, nurturing, all those kind of things and we are reverting back to slow cookers and they're having a huge revival. And quite big in the South Island too I understand. Very big but very big everywhere you find working mums mm -hmm. and dads um, and especially where there's lovely cold weather people are really busy but certainly even in the cities right now very big revival. It's great isn't it and I guess the wonderful thing about this book is it really breaks down some of those um, common misconceptions and some really good do's and don'ts which I'd like to talk about today with you Alison because if anyone knows it's you. So let's talk about some of the basic rules of thumb that we need to remember when using our slow cooker and I guess one of the big ones is when we're using meat it's about browning meat isn't it? Well if you have time meat will have more flavour and there will be more colour in your casserole or your dish. For a lot of us though there isn't a lot of time. I did find that lamb and pork were better if they were browned but you can get away with beef. Chicken of course well that looks a little grey so if you've got time brown that too. Creamy kind of grey she says. So <laughs> yeah it does add flavour and texture but it's not essential. Okay that's good to know. With meat what kind of cuts are best if we're using particularly beef and things I guess? Um, anything that moves and does all the hard work on the animal. So you're looking at your legs and your arms. All these shoulder cuts and anything from the leg and, and thigh and rump end are really good for cooking in a slow cooker. They goes for pork, beef or lamb. Yeah, they, they, they actually almost fall off the bone, don't they, after a they while? They do. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Um, with vegetables, I know that sometimes I've had a big disaster with vegetables, thinking I've been putting them in too early. No, well, what I'm finding is that some of the root vegetables like carrots and parsnips are taking quite a long time to cook today and I oh, found okay. that as I've been going around the country talking. So they actually benefit from being placed at the bottom of the crock pot or slow cooker with the meat on top oh, right. and they will cook much better. Okay. Um, onions will cook better if you brown them first, if you're going to have them whole, otherwise they tend not to soften particularly well. So I found all vegetables or root vegetables, place them towards the bottom where the heat is. Good, good tip there. And and we can also make our, our cakes and our puddings and desserts in them, can't you we? You can make puddings in them. There is a chapter on puddings. Some of those that are self-sourcing, like chocolate self-sourcing pud, are fantastic in the slow cooker. Um, but once upon a time, we used to have round slow cookers and they would take a cake tin. Mm. So you could cook a cake. I'm not sure why you would bother because I think they come out quite steamy, but today the slow cookers are oval and a cake tin does not fit on them. True. Yes, so um, forget that, just go for puddings. <laughs> just put it all in and go for it. Yes. Now talk to me about what kinds of things we should always have in our pantry because the flavour and the spices are really important, aren't well, they? Well, to make cut your time and make life easy, go for the pre-mixed packages that you get. You'll get Mexican and taco seasonings that'll make a lovely Mexican flavoured casserole. You get all your lovely curry pastes and, and curry paste cook beautifully in a slow cooker. Your mixed and dried herbs and spices, get the rubs and the mixes oh, okay. so that you don't have to keep a dozen packets in your pantry. Um, tomato paste add great flavour to it and bisto is one of my favourite things because it will thicken, add colour and flavour to a family dish very easily. So it'll do all of those things as well because thickening is another thing as well that we kind of always need to be on top of, don't we? So bisto takes care of that. Bisto will take care of that and there's also a chapter in the book on how to thicken your casseroles. Um, um, what you can thicken with and at what time they're best used. Brilliant. Now what about toppings? If for example we're making a pasta or a lasagna or something in our slow cooker and we want that cheese on top or a, a crumble on top, how easy is that to achieve? Well what you can do is you can either transfer your casserole to a dish that you can place in the oven or if you've got a, um, a dish and your, and your food is right to the top on it, you can put your cheese on top of it and just pop it under a grill because the crocs come out of the, the units today and they are heat proof so you can transfer them to a fan grill just to give them some browning without mm -hmm. having to transfer them to a separate dish. Oh okay, well that's a really good idea. Was it hard to, to find all of these recipes or I guess to, to decide which ones to eliminate because there's um, so many? No it wasn't hard, in fact the book was never going to be 180 recipes long, it was only ever going to be about 100 but I kept on asking Penguin for more and more pages and so they let me 
have more pages. So we got <laughs> 180 fantastic recipes and I could have kept on going. That's good. Um, there are so many things you can do in your crock pot. So what would be one of your favourite things to do in a crock pot that always turns out well for you? Um, my mum's Irish stew, oh, which is great at this time of the year. So it's just shoulder chops and you layer them in a, in a crock pot with onions, carrots, uh, parsnips, celery, uh, parsnips, sweet and potatoes and um, some water, let it cook and serve it with Worcestershire sauce. That's what my mum would have done. Fantastic. Always works out well. well. Beautiful. What are a couple of good options for people that have perhaps putting their slow cooker on all day, so they're literally out of the house for like nine or ten hours? Is I guess meat based products a, a, a good thing for the slow cooker in those circumstances? It is. Chicken tends to be, chicken's quite different than what it was in the 70s when slow cookers first came about, so they don't take all day to cook. Mm. So preferably your lamb shanks and um, cuts of meat like a Shin is fantastic oh, okay. and it's cheap. Um, look for a cut called Mouse End. Now that's really good in your slow what cooker. What is that? Um, well, it's a it's a specialty piece of. You've asked me that on the <laughs> television. I'm trying to remember exactly where it came from, but it's quite a, a a marbled piece of cut that's often either put in the gravy beef pile or it's minced. But it, tell you what, it's very inexpensive and it cooks up really well. Fantastic. So they're the kind of cuts you need to cook all day. Okay, so you can safely leave those there for you can. A, all day and come back and they're just. You can delicious. on low. Some of the thing you've got to look for when you're buying your slow cooker or crock pot is the wattage and if you're the kind mm. of person who wants to have your food cooked in four to five or six hours then buy a higher wattage slow cooker. A wattage is a measure of heat so it will cook faster but if you're going to be gone all day, busy mum, out the door at eight o'clock with the kids not home till five, get one that's slower and the meat will take a little longer to cook and it will be just meltingly tender. Beautiful. Alison, thank you very much. What is next for you? You're a busy lady, I know. I'm having a break. Oh, good on you. A well-deserved one too. Indeed. And our viewers would love to know, how are your beautiful children? Um, well, apparently, according to my husband this morning, Olive Rose has thrown tantrums every night, so he's struggling with that. <laughs> and Jean-Luc is really well, but he's seven and a half and Olive Rose is now three. Oh so my goodness. I'm spending the rest of this year just enjoying being a mum at home. And rightly so too. And and cooking in your crock pot. Alison, yeah. thank you very much. And of course, don't forget that Slow is available in all good bookstores now, so do pick up your copy.